So I finished my box. Oh my gosh. Let me see it. I'm not, but I'm not going to do it until there's a point in my story. Oh. Work. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I like me, that. I, don't kill me. Uh -oh. I have less than 30 minutes. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You're going to tell a story in 30 minutes? Yes. Okay. It is. It is direct and to the point and you're going to love it. Okay, great. So I'll just tell you real quick then what I'm doing. Okay. So I found a, um, a Valentine box at Michael's. It's supposed to be something that you put like chocolates that you bake or something like little cupcakes and you put it inside the box, which you can't really see because I sprayed it black. I, I like it black. Yeah. And I'm going to turn it into something that's do with witchcraft. Oh, perfect. I love right. it. I'm, I'm, I'm always, I always love black. Like my decor. Well, you know, besides pink sparkle. Black. Yeah, besides that, I'm, I'm on the both spectrums, black and then all the way sparkly, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. I had told you that I was going to do a story, um, but then like I said, I changed my mind and I found another story last night. So, I don't think you've ever heard this before. Okay. So, this gentleman named David Sarton, never heard the name? Nope. Okay. 46 year old man living a very quiet life in Texas in 2009. So he is living in a trailer, kind of like on a couple acres. Okay. And he is at home. He is not working because he had back injuries and he had a couple surgeries. So he's living off a of disability. He's kind of living the great bachelor life. Mm. Except for he starts to feel a little bit lonely. So he had been married before, but now he's divorced, no kids. And so he's kind of like, well, what am I going to do with my time? I got nothing to do. Mm -hmm. The neighbors describe him as a great guy, quiet, stuck to himself. They're like, he was a great, quiet guy. We invited him over to our parties, like our kids' birthday parties even. Mm -hmm. he, they kind of felt bad for him, I guess. So, and as far as any kind of criminal background, nothing. Yeah, he, had nothing. One, he had one ticket, one like traffic ticket. Okay. In his life. Yeah. He's sitting around in the trailer, feeling lonely, feeling sorry for himself. And he's like, I know what I'll do. I can't really date in this town. I don't know why. I can't really date in this town. Mm -hmm. So he hops on the internet and he finds uh -oh. mail order brides. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> okay. So, that's always a fun one. I don't know why he would need to do that because it sounded like to me he had a perfect life, not having to deal with all this stuff. But whatever so he hops on to the website is called dream marriage mm, i wonder if it's still around um i almost looked it up but then i was like you know what i'm just gonna leave that out in the universe that it still exists because yeah. okay it just it feels good that it would exist to a certain degree sure i'm not against love it's nice that people look for love i do love love so mm -hmm. i am going with people are looking for happiness and looking they need for love. it yeah. <laughs> they built themselves. So their thing was, so this was like their tagline, I guess. It says, safe virtual environment for Western, and they specifically said Western, for Western men to interact with pretty Russian brides and beautiful oh. Ukrainian women genuinely interested in finding romance, love, and happiness with the man of their dreams. Oh, man. Sounds perfect, right? I'm going to write yeah. that out on my little Valentine that I made. <laughs> I think a lot of them, their parents set their daughters up for this so they can get money. Because they're well, like... Yeah. So... Okay. Sad. But yeah. yeah. Gross. He connected with a woman named Elena Barikina. Okay. Elena was from Kiev. She was described as a beautiful blonde, half David's age, with traditional values. Hmm. And to go back to what you said, so apparently a lot of the um, descriptions for like yourself when you're like trying to sell yourself, that just sounded wrong. I know what you meant. You advertise yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was to say that you have traditional values. So that's a very common term that you, that, well, I don't know if you're looking, but I'm just saying. You well, what does that mean? Um, so traditional values means that they do it because they feel men will be more attracted to you because you fulfill the traditional role of a, what we perceive as a wife. So do the cooking, do the cleaning, have the mm, babies. Gotcha. And stay at home. Yep. That's what they think men are looking for when they come to these things. Okay. When they come to these sites. So a lot of times you'll see that. So 
David meets Elena. And from 2009 and 2000 to 2011, they start having a courtship. Mm -hmm. um, he, he actually, so he flew over six times during those two years. Mm -hmm. um, he spent a lot of time getting to know her. They actually spent, um, he spent thousands of dollars kind of traveling around, taking her on vacations. Oh, wow. He bought her really expensive jewelry, including a wedding band. Mm -hmm. uh, Elena. <laughs> Are you ready? So Elena apparently is a budding singer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you say performer? Do you say singer? Either one. Sure. Okay. So she's a budding singer. Okay. So David helped Elena by paint because she's, you know, she's, she's trying to get it. So she doesn't yeah. have a lot of time for other things. So mm -hmm. he paid for her living expenses and school expenses and uh -huh. photo shoots and record productions. Aww. And her website and i just have to say if yes. you google her name there uh -huh. are still videos oh <laughs> are they is she talented okay uh -oh. i sound like mickey mouse being strangled when i sing i'm not judging i'm, I'm not a good never singer never going to judge i will no. say this it was more than half the song before i realized she was singing in english though okay so i, I hear you okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the vocal range and qualities. And yeah, I couldn't tell. Okay. That, but yeah. So for Elena's part, she introduced David to all of her family. She actually, at one point, David was named the godfather of one of the young members of the family. There's actually pictures online of David and them at this thing where he's being pronounced the godfather for this little mm -hmm. girl. So they trust interested. him. Immediately, yeah. they trust him. Yeah, he was very involved in their life. He was very involved in their life when he went over there. And okay. they, it seemed like they welcomed him in because obviously he's being named a godfather for yeah. this person. Okay. Um, so actually, and Elena kept to her morals of saying that she had traditional values. Mm -hmm. This included not having sex until you were married. Okay. So they better get married then, is what he's thinking. That's what he's thinking, I'm sure. <laughs> David, that's actually what he believes. David believed that they would be wed and Elena would move to Texas and live with him. Okay. Wah, wah. Uh -oh. The love was not to last. Uh oh. Because David found out that she was sleeping with her Russian boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. And his name, actually, I don't know if this is a common name, but his name is Ark. Ark? Ark. Ark, okay. Yeah, like the one syllable, Ark. Ark. <laughs> Ark. <laughs> I had to include it because I thought it was a fun name. Ark Overtuski. So oh. it wasn't completely clear how he found out the information because because one source had said that he had hired an investigator and one source said that he just kind of found pictures and confronted her and she admitted uh. to it. So a couple different stories. I'm not sure exactly, but the end is still the same. David's heartbroken. Oh. Yeah. Poor guy. He's feeling bad for himself. Yeah. So, we all kind of know this saying, but I found a little background about it. William Congreve wrote in his, in the play, The Morning Bride in 1697, Heaven has no rage like love to hatred turned, nor hellfire like a woman scorned. Mm-hmm. So we always say, you know, hell no, no, hell no, no fury like a woman scorned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Mr. Congreve did not know the extent to which a heartbroken man in Texas would go <laughs> to get back at his old beloved. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So, we joke around that everything is kind of bigger in Texas, while the revenge plots also take a bigger, <laughs> bigger plot. But David actually tries to go the practical route. In 2011, when he finds out the information, he actually comes back and files a complaint on a website mm. called internetscamswatch.com. Ooh. So he, this is a, he actually explains in the letter that he was <laughs> contemplating committing suicide because okay. he was so heartbroken. Okay. He said, I had no idea I was being scammed as I believed in this girl with all of my heart and she Ooh. knew it. He wrote, yeah. So he really, I mean, he was in it, obviously, she wasn't. It's just kind of funny that you, you go back to, like, where you bought her from, and you're like, 
this one's broken. <laughs> this <Yeah>. didn't work. <laughs> I need to turn this one. My warranty's still good. <laughs> yeah. Can I get my money back? Yeah. He said that this is a very cruel thing to do to a person. Yeah. But hold on. My very first thought upon arriving back home was to put an end to myself. But I feared of not hitting the right spot and the pain would be bad. Hmm. Okay. David further describes in this complaint that he has given Elena $57,752. Was he rich? We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Look, that might have been not good for him to give out that much. And he said, I'm still adding up the receipts. That doesn't include all of the travel. It doesn't include all of the jewelry. He said, no, I have never had sex with this woman as this is something that is to oh. me sacred to save for marriage. This was great for her as she was getting it all for nothing. Oh my gosh. So actually Elena wrote back to him. Oh shoot, okay. Yeah, so she said, David, I understand how it's difficult to you to realize I cannot be your girlfriend. Please understand this, I am so sorry. I try to offer all that I can, my friendship. I cannot offer you more, sorry. Okay, well that's kind of what you say when you break up, right? Then you go have a pint of ice cream. Yeah, sorry it didn't work out. Maybe in some cases you still need a little bit, you kind of feel like you kind of need something. So maybe you uh, show up at the workplace and cause a scene, hope you get them fired, get them fired. Maybe you go on social media. And you oh yeah, them call, like, call them out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I would totally do that. Maybe you keep an old password and hack into something. Yeah, normal things. No. So David's sitting in his trailer, stewing on his heartbreak, and he decides he has the best thing. He knows what he's going to do. He goes to the hardware store, and oh, he God. starts building a fortified room in his house that is going to be able to keep a person captive. <laughs> David actually reaches out at the beginning of March and finds a gentleman who he hires to go to Kiev and kidnap Elena. And he's going to bring her back and he's going to keep her hostage in his fortified room. And then he's going to keep her around for about a week and he's going to do whatever he wants with her for about that week. And then he's oh, going to- Then he's going to what? Kill her. Does he tell the other guy that's his plan? Yes. So- Oh my God. Yeah, so they meet, David gives this gentleman $25,000 and promises he'll give him another $25,000 when he brings Elena. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman is to fly over and kidnap her and have her transported back in a shipping container. <laughs> Which is how he assumed she was going to arrive when he first ordered her. I apparently. So he actually shows up 17 days after the first meeting. He shows up in the parking lot of a hardware store. I'm assuming where he's already bought all of his supplies for his mm -hmm. fortified room. And the gentleman is supposed to be delivering Elena out mm -hmm. of her storage box. But wait, this is where it comes in. Oh! Surprise! <laughs> So, so she's, there's a box. No. He sees a box. <laughs> no. Oh. Dang the it. Pulls, the guy pulls I mean, up. That's good. Oh, wait, hold on one second. There's a dog in my house that's not my dog. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. There's a dog in the house that's not our dog. Okay. Any ideas? No. Okay. Um, I think she actually belongs back to the barn. So do you mind kind of just scooting her out the door? Yeah. Okay. What? Um, and can you guys, if the door's open, can you make sure all our cats are here? This is why they say don't work with kids and don't work with animals. <laughs> like just don't, don't have kids. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you know what? There's a, there's a, um, a cat spotting website where people are always like taking a picture and saying, my house but not my cat i'm like how does a cat that's not yours get i don't understand it and yet here it is okay literally there was just a dog in my house that is not happened to you <laughs> so weird okay so surprise it's atf agents do they pop out of the box <laughs> oh my god that would have been great oh that's so great 
So they arrest him, and on his persons, they find God. an envelope of twenty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, handcuffs, a stun gun, and a pistol. So he was not messing around, obviously. No, he had every intention that something was something bad was going to happen to Elena when she got there. So wow. obviously, the person that he thought was a hitman had been ATF agents this whole time. They've been recording him. Take him to court. And he pleads guilty because there's a ton of evidence against him. And he ends up being sentenced to 10 years for attempt to kidnap her. Um, And it's really funny because like I mentioned before, he said his plot was to kidnap her, bring her here, and then he was going to do whatever he wanted with her. And then he was going to kill her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't understand this one. So if you can help me out just a tad bit, because in my mind, it's one version. It's one Mm -hmm. way. Mm-hmm. His plan was to kill her with lead. He said, lead poison. That was his mode. So I'm picturing this like gentleman with like, you know, the old fashioned pencil sharpeners that were attached yep. to the wall with like boxes and boxes of pencils yep. grinding them down to get the lead. Yes. Perfect, right? That's exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he specifically said lead poison. Okay. So I thought he was going to stab her with a pencil. <laughs> There's not an explanation besides lead poison. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> he didn't think it out. No, yeah, obviously it was not thought out. So in the end, he was sentenced to 10 years. And like you asked earlier, you're thinking to yourself, where in the world is this man getting all this money from? Because this adds up to between 50000 in travel, right. 15000 in jewelry, twenty five. dollars 50000 now that he spent on a hitman. Right. So apparently he had been married before, and when they got divorced, he got half of that woman's oh. retirement plan. Oh. So they actually went and interviewed her about what they thought, about what she thought about the situation. And it was really funny because the quote on her was, she says, I was 13 years older than him, and he played me for a fool. Now he's met somebody a little smarter than him. Uh. Uh -uh. (laughs) David's father was also interviewed for it and he said quote he has warned his lonely son about the relationship but she was prettier and could talk sweeter than me (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh she's like I don't care she's like he deserves he deserves it yeah but he only got 10 years he's like he was willing to do something really crazy. Yeah. yeah. So is, is he out? Or like, is it, has 10 years passed? No. So that was in 2012. He got sentenced, like end of 2012, okay. beginning of 2013. So he's still, okay. I, I mean, I don't, I had, didn't see that he was really yeah. early, like early release at all. I just imagine him like planning his next way to capture a woman. And it's like Wiley Coyote. He's got like a trap <laughs> and he pulls a string and she's hanging there and he's like, gotcha. Like this guy does not know how to date. No. And seriously, the lead thing, seriously, like I'm picturing like that pencil, like, like, like yeah. who kills somebody with lead poison. And, and what does that look like? Is that like a really <laughs> terrible way to go? I don't know. I have oh, no sh- idea. She's so lucky that she got away. Is he gonna like make her lick stained glass windows or something? Like, where do you get lead? Like bad glass and bad, bad bad pencils, bad paint. (gasps) Oh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was he was gonna make her repaint an old house and see what happened. (laughs) He was gonna roll the dice on that one. (laughs) Yeah. How do you feel? Oh, you're painting that wall. You're feeling sick, like <laughs> feeling lightheaded. That's no. Yeah, get a little sweat there. Let me dab that off for you. Yeah. So, anyways, at the end so, of the day, hey, nobody died. Nobody died. Mom and you can go watch a music video. I do, okay. What's her last name? I'll spell it for you. I have to spell it. <laughs> you could send it to me later, unless you want. I'll, I'll, it. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, they okay. can look it up. <laughs> okay. okay, so sorry, my story was right. quick. What's okay. Oh God, I didn't get very far because I'm using a paint pen. I can show you my plan. My plan okay. was this: I designed this. I'm taking the heart and I'm making it upside down. 
so that oh, it's like a, a planchette, right? Oh, yeah! Oh, that's so and cute! So this looks a little crappy because I've, I've been testing out my paint pen, but this is my design. I did it on the computer. Oh, I love it! And then what that you do... my perfect Valentine, I have to say. Yeah! That was oh, and, and it's not going to have chocolate in it, though. I, I don't oh. know if you like chocolate. It's going to have something else. Oh, what? Something witchy. So for you to, for like, I, I did this. I was like, this is so cool. So you print it out and then you have to trace it backwards. So I use like a light box to trace with tracing paper. And then you're, because now it's backwards, my lead part that's right side up, when I go to trace it onto here and I trace it again, now I can see my little pencil marks. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's such a fun okay. like little transfer. So now I'm gonna do gold and silver in, in between the letters and everything and it's it these are it's gonna take a while because when it's still not dry it's like it's like don't it, stare it in yeah 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 so i'll work on that um but we'll yeah this when we're done so what's gonna go in here are little crystals and stones oh that's so cool yeah oh i love that so oh it's God, that's, like, that's like my valentine's day yes that would be my valentine's day yeah so yes. Although, okay, okay, so ending note, I want to share, because I like to share my family traditions with you. Uh -huh. On New Year's, remember I told you what we do. Yeah. So, growing up, mm -hmm. every year on Valentine's Day, we always got like a little candy. Mm -hmm. And we didn't always have, you know, we always, we didn't have a ton of money. But my mom wanted to do something to celebrate Valentine's Day a little bit. Mm -hmm. So every year on Valentine's Day for dinner, she dyed all of our food red. Oh, <laughs> that's what, like, can you remember? Was it like chicken? Like, oh, cottage cheese. Yeah. <laughs> she served as cottage cheese dyed red. That probably Mutual. looked pink. Yeah. Beets, because they were okay, red. I love beets. Um, I see my mother was horrible cooking meat. I think there was liver involved because it was kind of pink. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then pink mashed yeah. potatoes because they were. That's cute. <laughs> but everything. So when she served you, everything was pink. But or like red. that's so simple. And she, <laughs> she made a memory with you and didn't have to spend a lot of money. No, and I have to tell yeah. you, I totally done for my kids several times. You've done that with them? Yeah. Oh, I should try that with Ethan. He might be like, "Ew, why does it look like that?" Because he's well, three. You know, Albert, you know, like yeah. She, oh, things that are already that color. Eat cottage cheese. Not appetizing to a child. No, it's no. chunky. No, but go yogurt. You're right. Yogurt, you could do it like a pink yogurt. Yeah, potatoes weren't that bad. No, I bet you that it probably tasted better for some reason. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the meat. You gotta figure out the meat. I don't know. Like I said, I think we ended up with liver because it was kind of red. Oh yeah, they gave me her. liver. They gave me liver once, and I, I like spit it out in a plant when they weren't yeah. looking. I do not like liver. I no. like pate. Some pates. I do. Yeah. I'm just not gonna have a liver piece of liver. No, no, no. It just sounds horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so take that home. Go home. Make your family some red food for yes. Valentine's Day. That's all you need. It's very <laughs> simple. Exactly. <laughs> and they'll know that you cared. I cared. <laughs> Look, it's red. I care. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> That's cool. Okie doke. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Yes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, create crafts, not crime. Yay! Yay! We did it. That was a great one. Whose dog is in my house? <laughs> Okay, you gotta go figure that out. My son! <laughs> <laughs>